Have you been looking for a transaction management system that is really going to decrease the amount of time that you spend in the admin part of your real estate business? Let's talk about it today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 317, and you can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Perfect. Well, very excited to have our guest today, who I was just trying to remember how long. It's got to be at least 20-something years, probably longer. Maybe uh, Brad will be able to say, but I have known Brad Gus Gustafson. I always know him as Gus. But he's Brad Gustafson since we were in management together at way back at Prudential uh, Americana Group here in Las Vegas. I'm very excited to have him come in and talk about something. And I'm just going to set this up for a second. And he'll tell us more about who he is and where he came from. Definitely think it's Minnesota, right? I can't wait because I he definitely sound, I'm really remembering that you're a Minnesota guy. Uh, but the bottom line is back in the day years ago, Brad had a system that he was training the agents and he was helping. He was a big trainer in, in, in our company on how to manage their transaction. It was basically the good old whiteboard. And now that whiteboard has turned into uh, an evolution. It's gone through an evolution that he'll describe to a real software program that you can have to manage your transactions. But it's so much more than that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's bring in Brad. And this is Brad Gustafson the creator and founder and owner of TransTrack, the system. So uh, pick it up. It is Minnesota, right? Weren't you, aren't you from Minnesota? Yes, I am. I grew up in Woo-hoo. Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah, you could tell, right? It's got that accent, but I remember you telling me about that. But tell everybody a little bit about your background. That is what I know. I remember clearly you building those boards because you were, you were helping agents <clears throat> at the time, right? Get Set that up. So take it from there and give us your background or maybe even before that, what got you into real estate? and take us sure. to where you are now. Sure, I'll go uh, quick. Uh, I actually graduated college in 1982 and uh, wound up working at Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner & Smith in Minneapolis for some vice presidents and got a Series 7 license. Uh, but I got out of that business because uh, I didn't like the idea of selling intangibles that could disappear on you. You know, a stock can be gone, but you know, I like tangibles. Uh, so I left there and went to work for Best Buy Company uh, when they had eight stores wow. uh, in Minnesota. And I uh, worked with them for several years when they grew from about eight stores to 40 or 50. Um, I was a regional sales trainer. And uh, back then, they actually had salespeople that were working commissions. And uh, actually, before that, when I was in college, I sold encyclopedias door to door. So oh, I've done man. a lot of door knocking and a lot of selling. Uh, but we uh, uh, sold a bunch of stuff at uh, Best Buy Company, and they transformed their business from commission salespeople to what you know today, uh, which is people that are non commission. And my job training people how to earn a commission disappeared with that transition. Uh, So I was laid off and uh, I spent a couple of years traveling around the US uh, as a tour guide, sleeping in tents with Europeans uh, at all the national parks. So I've been to every state, but Arkansas Arkansas and Vermont to the two states that I have left to hit. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Anyway, I got tired of sleeping in a tent and uh, I decided it's time to settle down and my, a cousin has a had a or probably still has a real estate license in uh, Las Vegas, and because I had a background in sales, uh, I said, "Well, I'm going to go get a license and sell real estate uh, in Las Vegas." So uh, after I traveled around the country, uh, I, I liked Vegas because it was close to a lot of outdoors activities, and it was a city that wasn't too big. It was easy to get out of, and the economy was good at the time. It was uh, the early 90s mm-hmm. uh, and I spent some time I got into uh, uh, the business and worked for a small firm uh, for about three or years or so and then I was recruited by Prudential Americana group mm-hmm. uh, where Jan was working and I you know said you know to them I don't want to I'm not going to move just to be a real estate an agent uh, you know there's got to be a reason other than just you know, sell here instead of sell there. Uh, and so they said, well, tell you what, why don't you become a sales manager and trainer? 
And that's when I was a sales, I came in as a sales manager, the first person they hired from outside of the company directly into management. Uh, yep. and, and I was the, one of the two salespeople or sales managers at Jan's office in the Northwest Las Vegas. That's right. Uh, yeah. And then, and then uh, I, you know, stayed there. I got a little tired of the, uh, the, the management part and I went back to just being a salesman uh, at, at Prudential. And one of the guys I trained left the company, George Garcia, Jorge. Yeah. Uh, and he actually went to uh, 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 Realty Executives. And he, when I was training him, you know, we always said, you got to take listings, listings of the name of the game, but he never could grab that concept and, and embrace it, you know, fully. And, but he went to, got some training from somebody other than me and Jan uh, when he was at <laughs> the executives uh, and he, and, the, and he got the bug and in about two months, he listed like 20 properties. Wow. And he called me up uh, after he had these 20 listings and he says, Brad, I got all these listings, but they're not selling. I don't know what to do. If you come <laughs> join me, work with me, I know you know how to get them sold. Come work with me and we'll split everything 50 50. So right. that was like, okay, I'll give you 10 listings if you move companies. So that yeah. was the only reason I left Prudential was because mm -hmm. of you, <laughs> or an offer I couldn't refuse. So George and I were uh, had an office next to the brokers in uh, uh, at, at Realty Executives, and we were closing five and ten deals a month. Awesome. And we were going to, our, to, our, to each other, hey, look, what, did you put the lockbox on that house that we just listed? Or what about that closing? Did we pick up the lockbox? Or did we order the sign down? And all these little things, you, you know, when you get busy, it's hard to keep track of everything. Your head is just not there, right? Uh, and we decide we need a system for existence, which is good ideas, you know, can die if you store them in your brain because your brain is not designed to store good ideas. Uh, and this is kind of uh, tangential. Uh, our brain is designed or memory is designed to keep us surviving, not thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever you have a, and it's, so it's full of all this negative stuff, your memory, right? You're, it's, you know, oh, I touched the hot stove, it hurts. I'm not going to do that again. You know, I get into a relationship and I get dumped, you know, by somebody. So I don't want to get in a relationship. I mean, so our brain is full of crap, right? <laughs> uh, so when you take a good idea, you know, we all have had done this. Like, oh, I got this great idea. And if you store it in your brain, it's in an environment that's full of crap and it gets crapped on and it dies. <laughs> Right. Wow. And then five I love years this analogy. Later, that's <laughs> really good. Five, five years later, you go, oh, man, whatever happened to that great idea? I mean, I think everyone listening is going to have some example of that. We've all done that. Right? Yeah. So the what you have whenever you have a good idea, you have to get it out of your brain and put it into something that's called a system for existence. And a system for existence is anything you know, like a, a goal board, you put something on the wall, it's on a piece of paper, uh, there's different levels of systems for existence. And the most effective is one that is a commitment with other people. When if you can do something with little effort that has other people hold you accountable, then it's a very effective system for existence. And, you know, one of the examples when I was in Vegas, I led hikes for the Sierra Club, not because I wanted to, you know, have people hike with me, but because I wanted them to hold me accountable to getting out and doing hiking myself. Right My on. way of thinking, you know, is if I, you know, called somebody and, you know, once I sent an email, you know, like once every couple of months and picked a couple of dates and said, okay, I'll lead a hike here and there, you know, then 10 or 20 people would be calling me a week ahead of time saying, where do we meet? Where do we go? I couldn't put it off. I had to go hiking. Right. So there is a system for existence outside of my memory. Uh, so, we had to figure out an assistant for existence for delivering service to our clients. And that was a whiteboard. And so uh, Jorge and I got a, he had an eight foot by 10 foot whiteboard that I spent a day and a half, or I don't even remember how Taking long. it out. Black tape. And we made all these columns. <laughs> yep. Hung it on the wall in our office, this great Love big, it. and it was, it was, you know, on the left-hand side at the top was the, you know, it said, you know, address. 
And the next was, you know, cut, you know, client name. And then it's the closing dates and all the steps that you needed to close a deal. Right. Mm -hmm. and it's taking it from the time you get a contract signed, whether it's a listing or a sales contract to the time you archive the file and cash your commission check. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the period of time that most sales trainers ignore. You know, most sales trainers, and I've done them all, you know, Floyd Wickman at, at, at Prudential, I went through that as a coach. Well, I, times. Yeah. I went through it before joining Prudential as a, you know, student, you know, Joe, uh, Stump and Buffini and all, all, you know, all these guys, they say, this is how you get a contract signed. Everything's wonderful training. But then when, once you got a contract signed, they leave you and they say, all right, spend 80% of your time in your business and 20% of the time working on your business, which is building systems to take you from the time you get a contract signed to closing, right? But they don't hand you a step-by-step -step process to do it, mm -hmm. right? right? And so, you know, th th it just doesn't exist. And it's really a, a shortcoming of all the major sales trainers in the industry, right? Um, so anyway, George and I created that system. We took our 20% of my time to build the system and I had a board on the wall of all the steps and we needed an assistant to help with the stuff that you don't need a license for the putting a sign on doing this, mm -hmm. you know, pulling lock boxes and stuff like that. So uh, we hired an assistant, an incredibly sharp young woman named Kim. And I told her from the beginning, you're too damn smart to work with me very long. So your first job is to replace yourself because I'm going to have to train you in yep. to do all this stuff. And then you're going to find something better and leave. I know that. And then I'm going to have to hire somebody else and train them in. So before you leave, your job is to make it easy to, to replace you when you leave. And so we took, Perfect. I think it was over a year. Uh, to go through all 31 steps to close a transaction and, you know, like to, to open escrow. I, I, I would sit there, she'd have a notepad and I said, okay, this is what you do to open escrow. Number one, you know, get copies of all the paperwork, you know, and here's the list of paperwork and then, and then you do this and they do that. And now go home and type it up. And so she went home, she'd type it up, bring it back, and we'd go through it. And I'd say, no, step two needs to be number four. We had to add another step. And we went back and forth to hammer out exactly what to do to open escrow, to do all these other steps. And it took a year to have all the steps detailed, uh, uh, you know, on paper. And I put them in a three-ring binder. And in the binder... really still old school. Yeah, it was number one through 31, little tabs, and the board had, you know, columns one through 31, yeah. you know, it's the, you know, submit to the MLS, submit the file to your broker, install the yard sign, I'll put a lockbox, do some marketing, you know, and then you get a sale, you submit the sales file, you open escrow, you, you know, do an HOA review. I mean, I'll go through those in a little more detail as we go forward, but uh I went through and, and it, after a year, I had a three ring binder with steps one through 31 and a board. So when she was left, you could hire somebody else and say, okay, Great. here's the board. There's a property on the left, one, two, three main street. And you see this row going across. If there's any box that's empty, there's something to do. Mm -hmm. Your job is to fill in the boxes. And it's column eight is, you know, uh, do, you know a walkthrough, right? Or there's probably column, you know, 30, you know 25 or so is a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. So it, it, to do a walkthrough, go to tab 25, read the instructions. And the last thing in the instruction will say, you know, put a check mark or the date completed on the board in that square. And then we know that step is done. And then you can, add, you know, look at this eight foot wide, wide you know, whiteboard on the wall and at a glance you could have 5 10 20 transactions and you could see what steps are not done you know and where you are you know and so you'd have your whole business right there in front of you 
I love it. So let me just recap. So you, you took everything. And so people in the day and people still today may use whiteboards, but where you took it to the next level, which is where I would say the majority, 99% of the agents don't do is the part that's the critical part that becomes the operations and training manual is you took the time, which took almost a year. And that's why people don't do it right to yeah. write out the procedures. Now, how did you go from whiteboard to, I think you went to Google, Google docs, right? Google, uh, yeah. drive. So, so I actually taught a CE course. Uh, I got approved by the Nevada real estate division. So it was uh, transaction tracking, how to keep things from little things from falling through the cracks. Great. Right? Uh, and I, I, you know, for a while I was selling for 300 bucks and include a laminated board and a three ring binder and all this yep. stuff was there. Uh, and, and then, uh, I, uh, after a while I cut it back and just, uh, you know, so for a hundred bucks, I, you know, give you a, a PDF so that you could print the stuff yourself and you know, buy your own three ring binder and et cetera. And uh, uh, Valerie Grijalva, who was at uh, First American at the time and is now at Old Republic, um, you know, promoted that cl uh, class, an abbreviated non-CE version. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would I taught a few classes uh, in, in their facility. People would come in and I'd show them, you know, the board that I had and I, what I was using. And I said, you can create your own or give me a hundred bucks and I'll give you the PDFs and you can print all this stuff out yourself. Right. Um, you know, it's never been a huge money maker for me. Uh, hopefully it will be now, uh, <laughs> no, but I don't need it, you know, so uh, it would just be nice if it were. Uh, but anyway, so I, I do this class and people, and this was, uh, you know, two, it was 2000. 2005 or eight, no, yeah. 2004 is when I actually uh, copy wrote those instructions. So when I wrote them, I got them copy written in 2004. Okay. You know, so that's 20 years ago. And then, you know, uh, uh, some years later, I, I was doing that in, in, at Valerie's offices and people would ask, hey, you know, can you make this a Google Doc that I can share? I can look at, I can, you know, I don't have to bring this board around. And yeah. I stored that in my memory for about another five or six years, or it was quite a while. I got out of the well, real estate. Good ideas. Yeah. yeah but it, it, it didn't get out of them. Uh, and I didn't have the 20% of the time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved to uh, uh, San Luis. A bit. I was in the real estate business. So I, I, after I left Realty Executives, I did. I went to a, a specialist real estate and we got hooked up. as a, I was an REO agent with uh, uh, for Bank Third of America. Downturn. Yeah, and they were just feeding me listings, and we were closing seventy-five deals a year. Uh, you know, and I was using the system to manage that. You know, I mean, that's a lot of business, and yeah. you know, I had multiple assistants, and you know, we had to pay the utilities, and there's more things involved in that. And had, we were responsible for maintaining a you know book of listings and all that yeah. as an area. But then they, uh, you know, they they uh, just stopped for closing. Back in what was it, two thousand and nine or something yeah, like, like that? Yeah, like started like in the eight, right? So oh seven, oh yeah. eight, oh nine. Yeah, totally. Yeah, well, that's when the the foreclosures were heavy, and that was those yeah. were my best years because sure. you know I I didn't have to go look for a listing every day. You know, I mean, it's that's a tough business, and I feel you know I feel for real estate agents. You know, you've got every day you wake up and your job is to go find a job, right? Mm -hmm. As an REO agent, every day I got up was to service my customer, you know, which was exactly. Bank of America. And it was, it's a different business. And, you know, I'm thinking that this, you know, another tangent with the uh, trans transformation of the real estate business, I foresee that there's going to have to be a lot fewer agents and more agents that are able to handle multiple, uh, a, a load of business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, my opinion. Okay. And I was saying this back when I was with you, Jan, is, mm -hmm. I mean, the current uh, statistic I saw was the median agent in the United States closes 10 deals a year, right? No, it's not. Yeah, I would say it's less yeah. than that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's just there's too many agents and mm -hmm. uh, the real estate business is stuck in the pre-industrial age. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you look at a doctor's office or a lawyer's office or a dentist's office, right? are they out looking for business every day? No, because there's not too many of them. <laughs> you know, there's, there's few, there's, you know, if you want to get a, you know, doctors are handling their business and the real estate. And they're business, specializing. Yeah. Yeah. And the real estate yeah. business 
can get to a point where there's one quarter of the agents that there are now or some fraction, I don't know if it's a quarter, but a lot less. And, and, and they're handling business like a doctor's office would. You know, because you hire and, and and the problem is, is they're not employees, that they're independent contractors. You can't tell them what to do. And there's too many agents. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so real estate is set up like imagine a doctor if you called up and he answered the phone and made the appointment for you, you know, and then you know, checked you in when you came into the office and then took your x-rays and your blood pressure. And I mean, that is not efficient. And I, this TransTrack system is designed for agents that are moving into the profession of real estate, like a doctor's office, where you can assign the tasks that you don't need your skill, and you just the, the agent should be only doing a few things Great. in their business and have a team that delivers quality service, right? You know, like a quality doctor or dentist office does. But you you can't get there until you've got a lot fewer agents, and maybe with this commission thing that's going on, you know, where if commissions are cut far enough, it'll have to get to the point where the surviving agents in the business are handling ten deals a month, right? Yeah, and I can and, see, and I can see a future path of that, to be honest, yeah. and it becomes more yeah. transactional and. Um, yeah. You know, because the only way to survive yeah. would be to be efficient with your systems, but to do more volume. Yeah. You, using exactly. your analogy of the foreclosures is a great example because it's yeah. it's definitely a path to go, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So anyway, that's kind of a kind of a tangent. And uh, uh, where was I? <laughs> well, you're talking about Google Docs, uh, making yes. it a Google yeah. Drive, and then you started selling that as a. You still actually can do yeah. that through Udemy, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened is, is I, yeah, I, uh, uh, the, the people that attended the, the courses in person at, uh, Valerie Grijalva was, you know, promoting it first. No Valerie. Uh, you know, would buy a system and then say, could you get, you know, have a Google doc. And then I found seven years ago, some time in my schedule to create a Google doc and a, a course on udemy.com. And it's, you know, they're always putting on sale so you could buy it for 10 bucks or 30 bucks. Mm -hmm or somewhere in between, and you download a copy of the uh, Google Docs spreadsheet. It's the same thing, you can put it up there. And there's some real limitations on a, on a spreadsheet, uh, but it's functional. And since 2007, I've had over 4,000 people purchase the system. So it's averages 33 people a month. Uh, you know, a lot of them don't use it, or, you know, from what I can tell, because I don't have access to them directly and I can, but I can see how many have actually looked There's 30 videos because there's at least one video for each step that explains how you do each step along the way. And it gets a little repetitive for some, uh, but there's hidden gems throughout. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just provide one example of the procedures that are included that I have a video on the Udemy and in the current version, of the TransTrack system, which is the last step of any transaction, which is archiving the file, right? So after you've you know closed deal, you've gotten your money, you've taken the sign down, and you need to archive the file. Uh, I'm gonna read the instructions. And this is the, uh, when you buy the TransTrack system software uh, or you know, the Udemy version, you get these specific instructions, which you can edit and change for your use later. But this is a generic instructions for archiving a file. Uh, and it's number one, confirm that all of the steps have been completed. Two, make a copy of the HUD-1 report and put it in a separate file where all HUD-1s for the current year accumulate. Beautiful. All HUD-1s from the previous year are to be mailed to clients in January to assist them in preparing taxes. Yeah, love that Three, one. Three, verify all paperwork has been completed for the file and archive per your brokerage's procedures and there's a colon and a space. So, you know, each, whenever you're using the system, you need to follow whatever procedures your office has for archiving that file and, and it may be you know electronic dot loop or they may have a hard copies a folder that gets locked in the broker's office or something but mm -hmm. it, you know you have your own and then uh step four click click the complete button 
<laughs> which is part of the software. <laughs> so you complete that, right? And then number five, document all conversations uh, at, in the notes section of the transaction as they occur. So the software has a couple of spots, one on when you complete a task or on a task page or on the transaction page, you type in, you know, I submitted the file and I did this or whatever, and you submit that button. The software version actually time stamp, dates and timestamps it and identifies you as a person that nice. put that note in and it cannot be edited later. And so that's for legal reasons. You know, if you, you know, have a dispute, you're going to go back and say, okay, this is the note I took the date and the time that I wrote the note and, and it, because it can't be completed, they, they can use it in any kind of dispute proceeding. Right. That's, that's great. That's a great risk reduction um, really good. system to have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, okay. And then change the status of the transaction to closed and then additional instructions as you might want to add and customize for your business. So that's just an, a simple instruction of the 30, or so steps right. and that's the last and every one. single one of them brad has that kind of detail and is customizable for the person that is what the beautiful oh yeah major upside to the system is is that you're getting the basic instructions that work in pretty much everywhere but now you just have to customize them for your area you know or your yeah. brokerage yeah right which yeah, would maybe absolutely. take one tenth of the amount of time that you know you would you could get your system go in and spend a couple hours customizing it for you and boom, you got yeah. a system, you got an operations manual, you have yeah. a really great way to not let anything fall through the cracks. And trust me, things fall yeah. through the cracks because everybody's got it stored up here in their head. That's right. Yeah. right? That's, and they're yeah. not using a checklist of any kind. You know, that's, I, that's it's so it's so detailed. So listen, can, can we were for those of you that are listening, uh, Brad's going to just do a demo uh, walk through the because now we've evolved from whiteboard to the Google Drive version. And now you have a real no kidding, you know, SaaS kind of software system, right? That yes, is, yeah. uh, is yeah. even a little bit more integrated. And I, if you want to just share your screen. So if you're listening and you want to go get a okay. get a chance to look at this, you can go check our YouTube. Plus, we're going to have links to where all of Brad's stuff is, because even if you just go and you're interested in learning more later in the show notes, you'll be able to go and, and this is how I started to see it because he Brad was very good. Let me tell you, I'm going to say one thing real here before he shows, before he demonstrates it. There is, uh, Brad is the example of what it means to be pleasantly persistent. That's right. Pleasantly persistent is a word I really learned from my good friend and fellow trainer, Steve Kitnick, who we used this a lot when we were training on uh, social. I mean, we, we trained on uh, short sales back in the day, back when we had all the short sales, we did a class on it in foreclosures. Anyway, Brad consistently has been <laughs> reaching out and on LinkedIn and just saying something. And, and, and I was like, I love it because he's just being pleasantly persistent. And I think the last thing that made me call you was, um, one of these things is going to catch your attention. And it was something to that effect. And I went, that is awesome. brilliant. And I'm calling them just because of that message right now. Because I was classically, I got, I don't have any time, blah, blah, blah. So be pleasantly persistent is, uh, you know, the takeaway of what you have to do in lead generation and follow up. Okay, so well done. So now you took it to this system. And why don't you just take a few minutes and explain a little bit. And we can, for those of you watching, you can see it in action. Go ahead, Gus. Okay, so when, uh, well, let me preface it by saying that there is a fee to take the, to use this. Uh, sure. And I've uh, set a price of $12.95 a month, which uh, hopefully isn't too much. Uh, and there's also a 100 day free trial because I look at, you know, other software companies, you know, uh, uh, CRMs in their 14 to 30 days to use yep. their system. and two things. One, most CRMs are so damn complicated. You have to be a programmer to figure out how to use them, number one. And this, you're busy doing real estate and, you, you know, agents don't have time to go through and actually use the whole system much. I mean, learn it much as use it. Right. Uh, and then they, most of them charge, you know, 50 to a hundred bucks or more, you know, and so, uh, but with a hundred day free trial, you know, you can get a listing, put it in, go through escrow, follow all the instructions, actually test it out. And if it doesn't work for you after a hundred days, 
you know, cancel and you don't have to pay a penny, right? So uh, I feel for real estate agents and I know it's every expense is there and you just have to be careful. So, you know, uh, anyway, I try to make it as easy as possible for agents to, to use. So the first thing, whenever you log in, you're going to be taken to the, uh, uh, what do you call this? The uh, dashboard. Yes, yes, dashboard. Yes, and the dashboard is on the left-hand side, you have a list. It'll take you to the list of transactions, which is the whiteboard on the wall. And as you can see on the columns at the top, the headings are, you know, team, property address, buyer and seller names, uh, list and sales price, list and expire date. And then the first group of tasks are submit to the, for listings only. Uh, submit to the MLS, submit the listing file, install the yard sign, install a lockbox, and do some marketing, right? Um, and once you get an escrow or, a, you know, once you make a sale, if it's just a buyer or if it's a listing that, you know, get a contract, then, the, then you start out with a sale and close dates, due diligence date submit the listing file, open escrow, review HOA, inspection, appraisal, escrow instructions, H, uh, home warranty, seller and buyer escrow appointments, walk through, closing package, remove yard sign, remove lockbox, closing gift, and archive the file, right? So literally, those are all the same steps, no matter what company you're at or what region in the country. Um, we all go through those same things, and you don't have to reinvent the wheel like I said, most sales trainers go like, okay, you know, go figure out a system. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, uh, uh, I'm going to, on the left-hand side, the dashboard consists of four tabs on the left. The third tab is the transactions, gives you overview of everything, right? Uh, and each, and when under the property address, it shows this is a listing and it's under contract. Uh, I can uh, choose the team that I'm on. So I'm getting transaction coordinators or this would be something for brokers if they want to you know have you know a, an office they've got five teams right mm -hmm. uh, each team has three or four agents or whatever all those teams could put the broker on the, their team and or the transaction coordinator and you just click down and i go like okay i'm going to get rid i'm going to pick gus's go-getters these are the two transactions that Gus's go-getters team has. Then you've got the beta testers team has nothing that's currently listed or under contract. But if I select uh, closed, you can see there's a closed transaction there. That's cool. Uh, and if I get rid of close or I switch over to the AFX research team, I've got one currently listed, right? And so we can go ahead and select, you know, canceled, closed, you know, all the different transactions. And if I select team, all the teams, I see, you know, I've currently got one, two, three, four, five, six or seven different transactions that pop up that are all teams and, you know, all statuses, right? Great. And if I, I can also just select the drop down that says listings, you know, there's five that are listings and there are, you know, there's one purchase, you know, buyer's agent. So, just by selecting drop downs, I can narrow down and pick what, you know, product or what uh, uh, transactions are happening. And like I said, if I'm a broker, you know, I could have be on 20 teams and I want to see, oh, what's Jan's team doing? Let me select Jan's team. And then as a broker, I can monitor what's happening. Right. Yep. Uh, or or yeah. a mega team leader. There's a lot of teams out there that right. have, uh, they're not, their, you know, they're within a brokerage, but they have teams of team, you know, teams underneath them. This is a great tool yeah. for that or for a manager yeah. of a team. Yeah. And so, in fact, at the top, you'll see my teams. There's a button. Mm -hmm. I just click on my teams there mm -hmm. and you have a page. Uh, it's going a little slow since we're broadcasting. Uh, mm -hmm. uh I can select these are the different teams like the go getters team shows the three members there's That's grad cool. mary agent and tom jefferson uh and if i go to the beta testers team there's uh you know there's me and ben franklin and tom jefferson uh and then the afx research team is just one myself i'm an individual agent so i can select and then i can add uh, other users simply by putting in an email address. I, I check for that user if they're already enrolled in the system. Uh, it'll just add them to the team and send them an email saying, "Hey, you've been invited to join this team. You know, verify that you want to. If you, it, or you actually get put on the team 
like that, boom. And then they can go there and click remove me from the team if they want to be on it. Awesome. Uh, and then if I if the the person is not in the system already, then it sends in an email saying you've been invited to you know sign up and join this team, and they have the option to go in and and, and register and become a user. So, but not only uh, is it a, a supervisory you know a compliance ish thing, you're, the way you're talking about this is if you've got a team and you you know, get this system and add a user, that user now has a turnkey, how do I close a transaction? Because yeah, if you exactly. go back to that, can you just show how, for everybody watching, how if if you have, a, especially if you had a team of new agents, or you just needed to train the person that's coming to your team that might have experience, they're going to know how to work with you, which I think this is huge, because I coach a lot of people, and this is what they don't have. Uh, right. yeah. on, on the team side, but how easily it could be. Can you go back to the transactions and just let's say I'm yeah. new to your team and I'm, I'm not sure how to do a step, how, how the, the um, instructions, the, the, how to do it pops up right on each of the, sure. each so of the uh, tasks. There's actually going to be a couple of ways that they pop up. If I have the, on the main page, the board, I call it just like a, some, a whiteboard, whiteboard. Type, mm -hmm. digital, uh, if I have no team selected, then and I go to uh, you know the walkthrough, I just click on the heading walkthrough, and right. a pop up comes up, and this is the and it says current procedures for and it's blank after because there's no team selected. So these are just the generic instructions for a walkthrough, right? Now if I actually select the AFX reach research team and I click on walk through, then it says uh, procedures for uh, AFX research. So these are the customized or customizable instructions that say, you know, edit the, pre you know, has all the instructions that can click edit procedure. Oh, this is but great. Edit procedure, it comes up with the generic instructions. And I say here under additional instructions, uh, I'll capitalize it. Uh, Here's a demo for Matt and Jan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let me put a space in there and I hit save. And then Great. now all they have to do is they click on, uh, what did I say? Was it a walkthrough that we were talking yeah, about? It was uh, a where is the one? Oh, uh, walkthrough. There it is there. Okay. Uh, it says, here's a yep. demo for Matt and Jan. Well, so awesome. yeah, now the next thing that I'm going to show you on this is if I go to this, click on the address for this transaction. Now, like this one is a listing that's listed and you see there's tasks for, mm -hmm. you know, the green says that this submit to the MLS was completed on the 4th of November. I'm going to, let me, if I zoom in, okay, you there can see go. it better. Okay. Uh, and I submit the listing files green because it was completed on the 4th. Install the yard sign was completed on the 5th and install the lockbox you see is black with a red background because it's less than five days away. So that draws my attention and it's still due. It's due on the on the 10th, which is in two days. And it's been assigned to Brad because I'm the only one on the team right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if it had been assigned to somebody else on the team, their name would pop up. Uh, but for the AFX research team, I'm the only one on it right now. Uh, and then there's a marketing is due on the 14th and it's just in black because it's not, you know, it's more than five days away. Mm -hmm. right? um, and then we see the rest, the sale day, due diligence, the rest of the ins is empty because it hasn't gone into escrow. Right. So what I want to do is actually just click on, I want to create an escrow. So I simply click on that property address, a new tab pops up. You see that? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And it has the, All the seller's name, the agent. Great. And then I'm going to have a simple drop down. I change it. Well, it is a listing and it's listed. I'm going to put it under contract. Now, when I click under contract right now, this field's only for list date expiration date, right? But mm -hmm. when I go to under contract, the sale date great. pops up. Great. So what day did it sell? Is it, it sold uh, yesterday? that I'm entering it today and a close of escrow date is in, let's say January 22nd and the due diligence date is in uh, three weeks, let's say the 29th. 
uh, and the sales price is seven hundred thousand is listed at seven fifty, and the commission is eight percent. I think and I'll just put three. Uh, <laughs> I think that's come out right. Uh, <laughs> you can fill out all the key stuff you need, including who's yeah. the other side and all that. Oh yeah, I'll be there in just a second, but I'm gonna just go down the right hand column first and then I'm gonna put timestamp. Uh, I'm doing demo for WBNL, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a note and I hit save that note and then it's like doing demo at 921 a.m. by Brad, this note was added, right? Now over here, I'm gonna be reworking this a little bit. I wanna search contacts. I can you know, look for, uh, you know, let's say Sue, you know, I can do a, a fuzzy search for names, but I'm just gonna go real quick through here. People, when you add them, you add them as a type of contact. So sure. I'm, this is a list thing. So we, let's say we've got the seller, mm -hmm. his name's Lang, because you create a transaction from a property and that's, another demo but for this i'm just gonna say we need a buyer so john buyer i'm gonna hit plus b he's now the buyer and we need to find a buyer's agent so let's say uh he's uh, mary Mc plus ba so the buyer's agent is mary and then john buyer is the buyer uh and then we want to have escrow assistant mary mancuso is the uh oh wait no no uh uh ea uh, no, yeah, I'm escrow officer. Robert Low Bosco is the escrow officer, right? And I can go through and just search my contacts and add, you know, the escrow officer, lender, loan officer, escrow assistant, loan processor. All these people can be added just by searching the, you know, who you've got in your database and clicking the add to the transaction button, right? Or add a new um, one if you haven't used them before. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Can add a contact. It's, that's the add a contact. You just put in their name and stuff. It's pretty simple to add a contact. Uh, but now that I've got, you know, a few contacts in there uh, and I've got the date set up and there's this is the list of tasks for a listing, which I loaded prior to this. Mm -hmm. But now that I've got dates in there, I need to load the tasks for a transaction. Sure. Right? You know, and most CRMs say, OK, go create your list of tasks and figure stuff out, right? Well, I've got all the tasks that are gonna be the same for any transaction anyway. You don't need to create a new list. It's mm -hmm. already built into the system. And I put in dates, uh, which you can change later, but I've calculated, when I click this load, a con load under contract task list button, you'll see when I do that in a second, it thinks and it loads up all the tasks. Awesome. So, and if I go back to the board, oh, here, here we go. And I scroll across, you see all those tasks mm. are loaded with due dates. That's great. And I, I've got it set up that, you know, that they're all due based on either what day do you go into escrow, what time, when is it going to, you know, like submitting the sales file is, file mm -hmm. is how many days after the sale. You got know? it. And when you do the walkthroughs, how many days before it closes. So I have all the calculations set up to generalize and, you know, uh, let's say, but, and none of them are assigned to anybody right now. The first is, uh, you know, like submit the sales file. Now it's a, it's due on the 10th, which is in two days. So I'm assuming the calculation I used was whatever the, you know, you have to submit your sales file within two days. That should satisfy most jurisdictions. It might be even less than that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is enough of a warning. And I, if I click on that uh, box that says due on the 10th and assigned to blank nobody, a page pops up for that task. And on that task, if you go to the bottom, you'll notice these are the instructions, instructions. Yep. that are loaded for this team. This is this team's task instructions uh, and it says assign to, there's a button that says assign to. If I had five people on the team, it would list five names. And I just mm -hmm. click the button that says assign to Brad. So now it's my task and it's due on the 10th, which is two days. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and change it to the ninth, right? Okay. So, I really, and, you know, or let's say it's delayed. I want to change it. You can go to any task and change the due date 
very simple. And if I go back here, you'll see it's assigned to Brad and it's due on the 9th. I love it. And if it's I go very, through, very customizable, I'm telling you. But listen, yeah. for the sake of time, I want to go yeah. forward because um, there you have so many great tutorials that, that are on your, your page and even on YouTube, I believe you have them, where people can yeah. really see this if they want to go. But I want to be able to kind of wrap this up to talk about how do people get this? What do they have to do? Uh, simply go to or how can they um, go because you're offering a 120 day demo. I recommend uh, people 100 day, try it, 100 right? day. I actually well, I'm thinking back. I used to well 100 is my, awesome because you're you're uh, right. It's usually I, 14. Yeah, go ahead. I, I I used to coach Brian Buffini's uh, 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 100 days to greatness. So all right, good. If he's like listening out there, there Brian, you, you can promote this system to your agents. That's right. <laughs> okay. I hope yeah, it's not copywritten in 100 days to. <laughs> yeah. No, there I'm not using this. So, anyway, yeah, it's to go to the website, which is transtracksystems.com. That's T R A N S T R A C S Y S T E M S.com. So, the track does not have a K in it. So, it's transtracksystems.com. And there's uh, there's a button that says "Sign me up" at the top, uh, and straight, it explains. You, you'll have to put in a credit card, and it won't get charged for a hundred days. And uh, at below the "Sign me up," uh, there's YouTube videos that are. You know, I have links in there that walk through more details. Uh, you know that show you everything. And call, email me, Brad at transtracksystems.com and I'd be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one demo or a, you know do a sales meeting for an office and show everybody the the system Perfect. Uh, you know, it's just take it's just starting out I've you know got uh, a, a few people using it right now but uh, the key is is I, I didn't have to pay uh, uh, anybody to build the system I, I actually got in a coaching program uh, to it's like no code programming. Really? Uh, yeah. I, was, I ended up spending maybe six grand. And I took three months, three and a half months of pretty intensive coaching and training on using a, so a resource called bubble.io, which is basically a software for building software. Wow. So you don't have to know coding. So you, you did this. I built this myself. I, <laughs> wow. you know, so That's wild. I, I built this whole thing myself. And, and so I had, you know, I, I, there's two super, super sharp women. I, I don't remember their, I'm not going to, uh, I'll give you their link. You can add it later if you want, but they're incredibly good. Wow. Uh, I was really impressed with the coaching I got. They walked me through step by step. And, uh, but it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work yeah. for three months. You know, like I say, you got to work on your business. Well, this 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 took a lot of a lot, lot of a lot of time. But you know, I got six grand in it, so you know, hard money. I don't need to make a whole bunch of money. I don't have to charge. I don't have to pay off a hundred thousand dollar debt. Yeah. To, you know, to to you know make this happen. So I don't have to gouge agents. You know, right. I can give them a hundred days. I you know, this is so. It, it's what agents can use. Straightforward. Um, you know, the learning forward. curve is nothing. It's just right. basically click through. It tells you what to do. There's customization yeah. in it. I'm sure as you, since you're the designer and programmer, as you, as, as people begin to use this and you get the word out there, you know, there's a, you, you probably just like any software developer would take, people are going to want to customize a few things or, or add something. Maybe is that something that you'd yeah. be open to if, if you had enough oh. requests for it? I'm doing it every day now. Uh, you know, right, what right happens on. is, is the you know, uh, uh, you know, somebody wanted to have you know, like, on the tasks, you know, they have a date for that, you know, that it's due, and then we have a, a an appointment date. So, uh, and somebody wanted to know how do you get? Oh, it? that's great. You know, is this a date? What about time? And so I added a date and time All field. Right, I figured it. it out. It took a little while to figure out, but now there's a date and time field. My next step is I'm thinking I need to add a like a calendar. You know, so uh, there's, there's, you know, one of the pages is, is my tasks and it gives a list of all the tasks that are assigned to me in order of the oldest to the, you know, the latest, you know, the farthest out due. 
but I, I think I need to put a little calendar on there so you, you can actually have a calendar. There, when you put in a property address, and you hit enter, it connects with Google Maps and it Perfect. shows you on the map where the property is. That was pretty simple. I was thinking about having a link going with uh, 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 Google Calendar so you could actually yeah. you know, have sync back and forth. That I might need to get a lot of people signed up and yeah, hire somebody to work. get that integration done. Uh, but there's, it, it is anything can be done. I mean, it's very robust. Uh, you know, the possibilities are there. and and I don't want to make it too complicated because, you I know. I love it. Exactly, because people won't use it. You right. already nailed it. Most CRMs, yeah. they use about 10% of what there's in there. It's overcomplicated. So there you yeah. go, folks. If you're listening and you need a really turnkey transaction system that you're going to be able to customize, I mean, why not go give this a try um, and, and really see how you could, I mean, I, it, for so many reasons, just mm -hmm. for compliance, for customer service, taking care of your clients if you're just an individual agent. But man, for teams and brokers, the ability to just really provide something of value to your team members, to having an operations manual that you can customize. Man, I'm, I'm excited to, to get that out to everybody that's on our mailing list because we have a lot of teams, Brad, that have been looking for something like this. And honestly, in our team builder program, we're talking to Brad about how we can team up because in our team builder program, I basically did what a lot of people did. I didn't go spend all the time and effort that you've done in the year of doing it. I basically said, "Set here's a basic outline. You need to go create your procedures. But guess what? Nobody does it. Nope. So now yeah. you can take what Brad's done and for $12.95 a month, you're able to, you know, completely take care of everything that you need to do with minimal effort to just customize for your area and your team and your brokerage. So I love it. Uh, Matt, any final uh, words here? No, just like for sure. I mean, the heavy lifting has been done on this and that's the whole key, Thank right? You. you know, to, to be able to get there and get in there and do that. So fantastic. So let's, let's jump into our, our top three. We'd like to talk all our, ask all the guests that come into the, 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 uh, podcast here. We're going to start off with the first question here, Brad, you know, you're super organized. So I'm looking forward to hearing your answer to this. What holds you back? <laughs> Asking questions like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, guys. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so when the, it, this goes, gets to, you have to be careful what you ask because that's, you'll get it. This, this, the world is full of answers, right? And if I ask questions like, why don't I have money? I'm going to get an answer to why I don't have money, but knowing why I don't have money doesn't help me get money, right? Right. It just keeps me not having money. So I, if I want more money, I don't want to ask why I have none. I say, how do I get more money? That's the question. How do I ask, how do, how do I get more money? So when I ask, you know, what holds me back? I, you know, I want to answer what moves me forward. <laughs> what can I do to break free of my past and move forward. So if I ask the questions, how do I move forward? I'm going to find an answer. And that's going to give me what I need to move forward. Just talk about anything that has inspired you. It can be anything, people, books, you know, what comes to mind? Because a lot of times this will inspire other people to go look at something. Yeah. Yeah. So besides, you know, my, my parents and my personal, you know, people that have inspired me that aren't available, you know, to other others, right. uh, I, I just have a couple, uh, number one is Daniel Brinkley, uh, oh, yeah. who, who wrote the book, uh, saved by the light. Uh, and I actually, you know, have had breakfast with him at his dining, you know, kitchen table. Uh, and, he uh, one of the things he passed away years ago uh, and came back. He had a near death experience. Right. And and he, he's actually had a couple. And one of the things his near death experience included was experiencing how other people were affected by his actions. Right. So he, he you know had a experience his life flashed in front of him, and then he actually experienced other people how they felt by his actions. So my belief is that in the future, what you're feeling right now, I'm going to experience. So if I'm nice to somebody on the street, I'll experience that as part of my life experience. 
And if I am mean to somebody on the street and cut them off on the, uh, I'm going to experience that. So it's, it, it's just even the little things every moment uh, is that. Another person that inspired me is Og Mandino in his book, The, uh, the Greatest Salesman in the World. And one of, these, one of the things I can recommend people do, and I was like, I was watching your last podcast on uh, uh, being grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is kind of part of that. He, he had the scrolls, right? And if you read his book, there's several scrolls that say, you know, and he says, repeat these scrolls out loud every day, three times a day. So I actually wrote down each of those scrolls by hand. I rewrote them. And then I read them out loud onto wow. a tape recorder mm -hmm. uh, and played them to myself three times a day, each That's one awesome. for a month or whatever it was. Wow. I don't remember. That was so long ago. So I highly recommend that you read the, that book. Greatest Salesman. And Greatest Salesman in the World. Write the scrolls out. Read them out loud. Record them. And it's like you, we listen to, you know, subliminal tapes. You're supposed to, well, your own voice goes to your subconscious much right. better than anybody else. Totally agree. So, awesome. so Love I it. recommend that. All right. So awesome. those are two inspirations. Good, yeah. Then the last question here is what's your best advice for agents, entrepreneurs uh, to thrive now and into the future? Okay. So let me, what did I write down here? Okay. Whenever you think, <laughs> why does this keep happening? <laughs> right. If you have something in your life, whether it's business or personal, and you say this keeps happening, why does this happen? Right. If it keeps happening, there's a common denominator and it's going to be you. Yep. So the first <laughs> thing it. to recognize is that if you ever say, why, you know, how do I get, you know, why am I, you know, happening? Recognize that it's a pattern that it's happening over and over again and it's happening and you're the common denominator in it. And once you realize that you're the common denominator, you have to take responsibility for it. So embrace the fact that yeah. you are the cause of your life because you can't move beyond it until you recognize, you know, if you're blaming somebody outside of you, when you recognize and take responsibility for where you're at, then you have the opportunity for moving forward. But if you always stuck in things are happening to you, you're, you're not going to get out of that. You first but have to, to take You will get lots of opportunities to practice yeah. that because you'll repeat no. the pattern until you figure yeah. it out, right? Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. could not agree yeah. more with that. That is brilliant. Yeah. Man, you got and, great and, words of wisdom. I love and, and that. Then once, you, once you recognize that you're responsible and you take responsibility, then you ask the questions that I mentioned in the first yeah. that are forward looking. Don't ask yep. why did this happen or why does it happen, but how do I create what I want? How I do I move it. forward? Sorry. How let me ask questions that are looking forward and express your goals and wants, not your fears. Love it. Woo! Good stuff, Brad Gustafson. Okay. Come on. Yeah, I love it. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, if you can get all of the information about today's uh, podcast over at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 317. You can find all of Brad's information, more information about how you can get started today on TransTrack, the TransTrack system, over there at WBNLpodcast.com. Now, Brad, before we go, I do have to ask you one last question because being a National Parks fan myself and a hiker, I need to know, like, what was your what, what is really your favorite National Park? And is there a hike that you would recommend that should be on everyone's hiking bucket list? Uh, you know, I would say Zion National Park and Angels Landing. Oh, beautiful. I, I couldn't there. agree with you more on that. Awesome. Very, very good. I love it. Awesome. Right off the top of his head. I love it. That's fantastic. All right, everyone. Great. This is great stuff. Like I said, uh, over at WBNLpodcast.com, you can get all the information about the TransTrack system and more information about Brad. And until next week, align, connect, prosper, and be forever wandering, but not lost.